We're with Frank Manning. Frank is an attorney who runs Manning & Manning. Uh, he's in, his office is in Mentor. Uh, he is not only an attorney, but he is a small businessman as well. Uh, and much of his practice is uh, small business related and uh, in some cases startup related. Frank, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. Um, you do a lot of small business work, Frank. Um, the vast majority of our uh, business is small business. We don't have uh, very many. I think at the current moment we only represent one publicly traded company okay. and we do very little with them. Okay. Um, so you know it pretty well. Um, yeah. And just like our, our previous guest, Rick Sepala, um, I had mentioned to Rick, I don't know if it's when you were here or a little earlier, that usually your CPA knows a lot more about your business than you realize. And I think with a good attorney, it's the same way. The attorneys have seen so much. They usually have to, to uh, be called in when the crisis is a hit. And uh, and really should be hired in advance. There should be somebody on call for an attorney or, or have an attorney like yourself on retainer um, because you kind of keep them out of trouble. Well, and you know, that's one of the biggest challenges in the industry is we are seen, uh, for lack of a better comparison, to be like the firemen. You don't call a fireman until there's a fire. You don't have them come out earlier and expect the, inspect the home to see if there's potential risk. Um, despite the fact that oftentimes those visits or um, exchanges can, you know, save a, a great deal of wealth. In other words, pay now or pay real dearly later. <laughs> yeah, I, um, you know, very little of my work um, is actually in the field of litigation. Although I do civil litigation, I've done a, a, a number of trials, uh, jury trials, etc. Um, I would say only maybe at the current time 15% of our caseload is pending litigation, but it is 50% of my revenue. Oh, my golly. Okay. Which gives you an idea that what you're going to spend for litigation because it's so labor intensive as opposed to planning and uh, projecting out what your needs are going to be, have, the, have an attorney know what your business is. So when you make that two-minute phone call, you know, they, ha they already know in the back of their head how many sites you have, employees, what the nature of your business is. So the, the value of what they're giving you in advice is greater because they have a long-term relationship. Um, you know, it's the classic story of somebody picking up the phone and giving you the pieces of information they want you to know. And uh, so you need to, you know, through experience, I sit and I ask all the other questions to get all the information I need to know if it's a first-time interlude. But I have long-term clients where they can pick up the phone and give me two minutes' worth of information, and I have the other 50 minutes' You've worth of information. You've got it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, what, that's where you bring greater value to the relationship, in my experience. Should your attorney be on your board of directors? Or board of advisors, depending well, on the size of your company. Yeah, your attorney should at least attend the meetings. Okay. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of important um, information exchanged. You know, the the ideas are, the, my experience being on boards and things of that nature is um, there's a lot of projected information. You're not dealing with the, with the sales. What were the sales for today? You're dealing with what are the sales going to be in the next 12 to 24 months and how are we going to get there? Are we looking at new site locations? What do we need to consider?